Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I join the Prime Minister in his comments about the coronation? Across the House, we are all looking forward to the celebrations this weekend. Mr. Speaker, does the Prime Minister know how many mortgage payers are paying higher rates since the Tory party crashed the economy last autumn? Well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, our, our, record, our record on home ownership is crystal clear. Because of our tax cuts, 90% of first time buyers now don't pay any stamp duty at all. Mr. Speaker. And, la- and last year we saw the largest number of people buying their first home in 20 years, Mr. Speaker. That's a Conservative government delivering on people's aspirations to own their own home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the question was how many people are paying more on their mortgages each month. And the answer that the Prime Minister avoided giving is 850,000. Nearly a million people paying more on their mortgage each month because his party used their money as a casino chip. That's why George Osborne called them economic vandals who created a self-inflicted financial crisis. Not not for the Prime Minister and his non-dom thing, not for the super wealthy they gave tax cuts to, but for mortgage holders all across the country. So, does the Prime Minister know how many more people will be joining them on higher mortgage rates by the end of this year? Mr. Well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, thanks to the actions we're taking, in fact, the Bank of England is showing that public expectations of inflation have now eased to a 15-month low. Mr. Speaker, consumer confidence is at the highest level that it's been at since Russia invaded Ukraine, and because of our stewardship of the public finances, we can see a clear way to reduce debt and bring interest rates down. But, Mr. Speaker, he keeps in this habit of quoting the former Labour shadow chancellors. We know that our plans will deliver lower inflation and lower interest rates, but we know we know that his plans his plans just mean. More more debt, Mr. Speaker, and I quote, and I quote, year after year after year. Those aren't my words. That's the assessment of the former Labour Shadow Chancellor. Mr. Speaker, the, the question was, how many more people this year are going to be paying more on their mortgages? And the answer that he avoided giving again. He knows these answers. He's, he's got the stats there in front of him. 930,000 people. So by the end of this year, I know they don't want to talk about it. That's why he won't answer the questions. By the end of this year, nearly two million homeowners, counting the cost of the tourist economic vandalism with every mortgage payment they make. And it's not just those who already own their home that are counting the cost of Tory recklessness. The average deposit for a first-time buyer is going up to £9,000. Does he even know how long it would take an average saver to put that sort of money aside? Mr Speaker, that's why why we've introduced a 95% mortgage guarantee scheme, Mr Speaker. It's why we're helping people in social housing own their own home through our first homes and our shared home ownership schemes. But, Mr Speaker, I said, I said these, these things are working because I said last year we had a record number of first-time buyers, the highest number in 20 years. It was, Mr Speaker, twice the number of first-time buyers than Labour ever managed, Mr Speaker. So whilst Labour failed homeowners, the Conservatives are delivering for them. Yeah. Mr Speaker, every week, whatever the topic, he stands there and pretends everything is fine across the country. And every week he does so, he reinforces just how out of touch he is. £9,000, ha ha ha, £9,000 would take four years. They think it's funny that ho- nine thousand four years, four years for the average saver to save £9,000. Or, or, or to put it a different way, in terms the Prime Minister will understand, roughly the annual bill to heat his swimming pool. <laughs> but for most people, for most people, four more years of scrimping is a hammer blow to their ambitions. And now he's kicking them when they're down, because his decision to scrap housing targets is killing the dream of home ownership for a generation. Why does not admit he got it wrong and reverse it? Mr Speaker, I promise to put local people in control of new housing. 
and I'm proud that that's what I delivered within six weeks of becoming Prime Minister. Now, he wants to impose top-down housing targets. He wants to concrete over the green belt and ride roughshod over local communities. Now, previously, Mr Speaker, he did say, he's on record in saying, local people, local communities should have more power, more control. Now he's U-turned. Just another in a long list of broken promises. Mr Speaker, the only power he's given to local communities not to build houses. And we know why he won't change course. He admitted it last month. His councillors simply don't want to build the houses local people need, so he's given them a way out. Picture the scene as he explains this to a family. Mum and Dad paying four grand extra on the mortgage because the Tories tanked the economy. Their eldest paying hundreds more in rent. Their youngest still stuck in the spare room because they need an extra £9,000 for a deposit. Then, then along comes the Prime Minister and merrily tells them, sorry for crashing the economy, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> sorry I can't help you with the house building, but my councillors don't like it. Oh, and before I go, here's a massive council tax increase for your troubles. Why doesn't he stop the excuses, stop blaming everyone else, and just build some houses instead? Mr. 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 Speaker, our memories aren't, aren't that short. We all know what happened last time when they were in power. There was no money left for the country. Let's talk, about, let's talk about the record. Let's talk about the Labour record on house building, Mr. Speaker. In London, the former Conservative mayor built 60,000 affordable homes in his first five years in office. How many did the current Labour, ma- Labour mayor manage? Half of that, Mr. Speaker. In, in Wales, we need 12,000 new homes a year. How many have Labour built in the last year? Half of that, Mr. Speaker. As ever, Labour talk and the Conservatives deliver. Mr Speaker, debt doubled since 2010, growth down, tax up, the economy crashed. Mr Speaker, they're going to need a bigger note. (laughs) And it's right. But week after week, we debate the issues facing in this place. But... But looking beyond the elections tomorrow, we also have a hugely significant weekend coming up with the King's coronation. For most, this will be the first time they've seen a monarch crown. And I hope, and I know across the House people will hope, that people across the country enjoy the ceremony, the street parties, and of course the extra day off. 300 million will tune in. The world will see our country at its best celebrating the beginning of a new chapter in our history. But it will also be a reminder of the loss of our late Queen, Elizabeth II, and a chance again to remember all that she gave to our country through her dedicated service. So will the Prime Minister join me in honouring our late Queen and wishing the new King a long and happy reign? Mr Speaker, as as I I said at the outset, we're all looking very much forward to the coronation. It will be a very special moment in the history uh, of our country, and I know that we will join with the country in celebrating it. But before we get to the coronation weekend, Mr Speaker, we have an important day tomorrow, and the choice before the country is clear. When they go to that ballot box, they can see a party that stands for higher council tax, higher crime, and a litany of broken promises, Mr Speaker. Meanwhile, we're getting on with delivering what we say with lower council tax, lower crime, and fewer potholes. The choice is clear. Vote Conservative, Mr Speaker.